So when I was in grade eight, my parents sent me to prep school because they thought I was a delinquent, which was a real fuck up on their part. Get to this school, make some friends. It's Halloween weekend. What are we doing? It's 2005. We're prank phone calling people. I prank phone call one of the girls at school. Hey, is your refrigerator running? Whatever. Okay. That girl's mother was on the board of directors for this school because it was like a small little pathetic prep school. What I didn't know was that during this Halloween party, she was having Shabbat dinner. So I get called into the principal's office on Monday and the principal's like, hey, were you prank phone calling people on the weekend? And I'm like, I don't get how that's any of your business. He goes, well, it is because you committed a hate crime. And I was like, oh, like I got to call your parents. I'm like, oh my God, my parents already sent me here because they think I'm fucked. And now you're going to tell them that I committed a hate crime. I was just prank phone calling people. So my parents come in, my parents who have never defended me for anything ever. Listen to this guy say, oh, she prank phone called someone not knowing it was Shabbat and she committed a hate crime. My parents were like, okay. Principal goes, yeah, well, this could be grounds for expulsion. My parents are like, what? My parents immediately tell me, okay, well, clearly since this is a private school, that mother has this principal in her pocket. You got to go apologize to her daughter. And I'm like, yeah, okay, no problem. I didn't think there was actually beef between me and this girl. Next day I get to school before I can apologize to her. There's an emergency assembly. Where the principal goes, someone here has committed a horrible crime over the weekend. And verbatim goes on to say, if you prank phone call people, if you do things like that outside of school, it will affect you inside of school, which really pissed me off because at that point in my life, I really liked throwing cherry bombs into porta potties. And I'm like, what? Can I not do that anymore without getting a talking to at school? So assembly's over. I go find that girl. Her name was Sophie. I was like, Sophie, I'm getting expelled. I don't know if you just saw that assembly about me, but like, I am so sorry I prank phone called you during Shabbat. I, I don't even know what Shabbat is. She goes, oh my God, my mom, my mom's crazy. She takes that stuff seriously. You know, it's like a holy dinner. And in my head, I'm like, well, why were you answering an unknown call during a holy dinner? But whatever. I'm like, no, totally. I totally get it. Can you tell her I didn't commit a hate crime? She's like, sure, for sure. But she didn't do that. She actually just went straight to the principal's office and said, I just ran into Sam in the hallway and she berated me and then punched me in the face. At which point I realized this had nothing to do with Shabbat and everything to do with the fact that she just didn't like me and she had the power to get me expelled. So she tells the principal I punched her in the face. Then she gets her friend to draw a comic of me beating her up and sit, go to the principal and say, I found this on Sam's desk. She was drawing comics of beating up Sophie. I think this is what she's going to do. I get called back down. Okay, so now you punched her in the face. You drew a comic. You committed a hate crime. We're going to have to sit down with the board. I'm like, okay, whatever. I go outside. I call my dad. I'm like, they are going to expel me. Why don't you transfer me schools right now so that the expulsion doesn't show up on my permanent record? And he said to me, he's like, Sam, I already tried to do that. And the principal said, if we transfer you, he's going to say you were expelled anyway. So what we're hoping is that you just don't get expelled. So nothing goes on your record. I'm like, so I'm stuck here. He's like, yeah, you're fucked. While I'm having this conversation, a girl comes up behind me. Her name was Jess. And she was like, oh, out of a movie. She goes, are you crying on the phone to your daddy? Guys, when I tell you, I turned around. I knocked that bitch unconscious. Little Motorola flip phone in one hand, little skirt. I wish there was a video of this moment in my life. I fucking roundhouse punched that chick. She hit the fucking concrete sleep. So now I'm kind of relieved because I'm like, okay, I feel like I just put this bitch to sleep in the parking lot and maybe they'll just expel me on the spot instead of putting me in this limbo where I don't know if I'm getting expelled or not. Riddle me this. No one ever tells the principal that this girl got knocked unconscious. She didn't either, which is actually pretty G of her. And the next day he calls me down to the office. I'm thinking I'm going to get a spell. He goes, okay, we've come to an agreement. You can stay here for the rest of the year, but you have to leave at the end of the year, which obviously at this point I have no interest in doing because I fucking hate everybody. But I'm also like, well, I don't want to have an expulsion on my permanent record. So I stay for the rest of the year. Last day of school, I tell the principal to go fuck himself. I tell Sophie to go fuck herself. Five years later, I see her at a party. He chases me down five flights of stairs trying to beat the shit out of me. I'm like, bitch, you got me expelled. I narrowly escape her. I had to hide behind a security guard. Anyway, next year I went to a new school. Student council president, popular, obviously. And then, you know, I grew up to be a normal, nice, great person. And she grew up to marry a gay man. I heard this through the grapevine. She actually just married a gay dude. Um, I guess he wanted a beard. And I don't know why he chose her. She's an absolute dog. But anyway, um, I think she's getting a divorce now. <laughs> God bless her ex-husband. Run, sir. Run as fast as you can into the arms of a, a loving man. The first time I got drunk, I was also 18 years old, by the way, which makes the story absolutely ridiculous. But the first time I got drunk, I did not want my parents to know. I was still living in their house and I was terrified of that because in their words, they brought me to this world. They could take me out of it. I took that very literal. I was like, I do not want them to take me out of this world if they find out that I'm hungover and drunk. So my friend drops me off the next morning. I'm laying in bed and I'm like starting not to feel that great. I'm like, frick, what if I end up puking? And our house is really small. We all share one bathroom. And I was like, if I go into the bathroom and if I start puking, my parents are going to hear me. And they're going to be like, she was with her friend last night. She's puking. We got to take her out of this world. And I was like, this cannot happen. So naturally, I decided to grab all of my stuff. I climb up our ladder and I go onto our roof to 
tan. I never did this by the way, but I thought that this was a genius idea. So I go up onto our roof, I'm tanning, everything's going fine, 10 minutes goes by, I start to feel really nauseous, I start to feel really sick, and I was like, oh my gosh, I think I'm gonna puke. So I tried to hold it in as long as I can, and, now, and then it just, it just came out all over the roof, and I was like, oh my gosh, this isn't any better. Like, they're still gonna find out. There's gonna be puke on the roof, but it just kept happening. So I go, I crawl over to the edge of the roof, and I just end up puking all over the car, the garage, and all over the floor. My dad comes out. He's like, what are you doing? I like, oh, dad, I'm, uh, I'm tanning on the roof in Tucson, Arizona in the middle of summer, and it's 114 degrees out. Isn't this such a good idea? And he was like, dude, get down. Like, you're puking. And I was like, I know. I think I, it's like, I, I didn't know what happened. I was like, I felt totally normal. And then now I think I have the stomach flu. And he was like, okay, get down. And I was like, no, I can't. Because at this point, my whole body was shaking. I felt like I was about to pass out. My dad was like, just get down the ladder. And I was like, dad, if I put one foot on that ladder, I'm falling. Like, I'm going to pass out. And so he was like, he's like, Susie, oh my gosh. He climbs up the ladder. He grabs all my stuff. He throws it off the roof. And he basically has to carry me down. He's like, go to your bed. You're sick. And I was like, yeah, yeah. Let me live another day. I'm so sick. So I go into my room and I actually ended up puking the next two days in a row. I still to this day haven't been that hungover ever. It was terrible. And but my parents believe the whole thing because it lasted multiple days. So but my mom has always been a dreamer. She's always been able to see things in dreams. And sometimes people from the beyond would visit her in her dreams and tell her things. For example, my mom was born in a really small village in Nigeria. And in this small village, no one there had ever seen a white person before. But in her dream, she saw a man that was bearded and a white man was officiating their wedding. And when she would tell people this, people would laugh at her because again, no one had ever seen a white person and it was inconceivable for a white person to come and visit this village, right? And when Suta started popping up asking for my mom's hand in marriage, she would turn them down because she had learned to trust her dreams. And she was like, if this is not the man that I saw in my dreams, the answer is no. A few months later, my dad, who was working in Europe, decided to visit this village. And when he saw my mom from afar, he was in love, he was smitten. And so he asked for my mom's hand in marriage. And when my mom saw him, she knew this was the man from her dreams. And so she said, yes. They did the traditional wedding two days later, and then they flew to Italy, where my dad was based, and a white man officiated their white wedding, just like she saw in her dreams. So they started a family and my mom had two girls, my two older sisters. And when she was heavily pregnant with me, she decided to not find out the gender because with my two sisters, they were wrong. They told her they were having two boys and she ended up having two girls. So she was like, I'm not finding out the gender. I'm just going to be surprised, but I'm hoping for a boy. One day, her mother unfortunately passed away, but because her sisters knew that she was heavily pregnant, they decided not to tell her. So they kind of kept it quiet for a few months and they were like when she gives birth we will tell her and so my mom went unaware for months this was the 90s before instant messaging and all of that so one day as my mom slept she had a dream and in this dream she saw 10 bassinets and each bassinet had a baby in it the first one had a girl and the nine after that were all boys and so my mom in the dream was like oh my goodness I want a boy and so she picked one boy and she started picking all the boys up and she was trying to pick as many as she could and as she was picking them she had a voice saying drop all the boys and she looked up and she saw her mother in the dream and her mother came to her and said honey pick up the girl and my mom was like no I already have two girls I want boys I want boys now and the, her mother was like I said drop the boys and pick up the girl and then i promise you every boy every baby you have after this will be a boy and so my mom a bit upset dropped the boys and picked up the girl and as she picked up the girl she woke up and in that moment she knew that her mother was dead and so she picked up the phone and as she called her mom of course her mom didn't pick up the phone so she ended up calling her sisters who then eventually had to tell her that unfortunately their mom passed away a few months prior of course, telling that to a heavily pregnant woman caused nothing but anxiety. So my mom went into early labor. And as she was in labor, she gave birth to me. But before she could even react to that, the doctors noticed this mark in my ear. 
And when my mom saw that, she remembered the dream she had because her mother, my grandma, had the same exact mark on her right ear, just like I did. And so my mom paused and realized that she was carrying in her arms a reincarnation of her mother. And the strange thing is that I sound just like her, I look just like her, I act just like her, and my mom is convinced I am her. And sometimes, sometimes, I have memories that are not my own. And her mother was right because after me, my mom gave birth to my brother. And then she said, four is more than enough. I'm done, okay? And I'm sure if she had continued having kids, she would have had nine extra boys, if that makes sense. And That's almost like that time I decided to do the Beyonce diet my senior year finals week of college. Um, if you're not familiar, let me just set the scene for you, okay? So the Beyonce diet back in, you know, the early 2000s is when you don't eat anything and all you do is drink this concoction of lemon water, cayenne pepper, and a little maple syrup for calories. That's all you drink all day. At night, when you get in the bed, you drink two cups, two cups of laxative tea when you're flat. In the morning, when you get up before you start your day, you're supposed to drink a quart of sea salt water before you start moving around. So I drink my sea salt water and I go about my day. I go to take my math final. I go in the class, the professor hands out the test and says, hi, this is a timed final. No problem, I'm studied, I'm ready. It's time for me to get the hell out of school, I am prepared. I'm taking tests, I'm going about my business and all of a sudden, I feel it. I feel the bubble guts. I feel the rumbling in my tumbling. I feel the thunder down under. I, I, something's happening. So I politely raise my hand and say, hi, professor, I need to use the restroom. And she says, well, this is a timed final. Can it wait? No. The things that are happening will not wait for time. It, it's gonna come, it's like, a, it's like childbirth. It's coming wherever you are. So I say no, and I proceed to the restroom. It was right next to the class, it wasn't far at all. I go to the bathroom, I shut and lock the door, is, um, and as I'm making my way to the toilet, um, I just barely get my unders down in time before a shatting occurs. A spraying, a painting, if you will. Now, to know me is to know that I just do a minor tinkle in public restrooms at most. I don't, I don't do my business out in public if, if I can avoid it. So you can imagine I died in that moment. Not only that, but the position I was in a mid squat, I am stuck in that position now because I have covered everything in my shat. So when it was done, I proceeded to clean myself up and stand up, put my clothes back on and turn around and I was shooketh. I, I didn't know what to do. I froze. Now mind you, I am taking a timed final. So I clean up what I can, wash my hands and go back to the classroom and I go straight to the professor and I say, ma'am, there has been an event in the bathroom. I have a situation. I need a little bit more time in the bathroom. And she's like, what's wrong? Are you okay? I say, I am okay. But I just had a moment in the bathroom and it requires a little more cleaning. As nice as she is, bless her heart. She says, don't worry about it. You finish your final and I will go clean or call the janitor. And I said, ma'am, please don't. I promise you will never look at me the same if you go into that bathroom. Mind you, I left the bathroom vacant, so I am terrified and my heart is racing that someone is going to go in there in between that time that I have left and I am talking to my professor. She says, don't worry about it. I take care of my elderly parents. It cannot be that bad. And proceeds to walk straight past me, headed towards the door to the bathroom. So if I didn't mention it before, um, I basically shat standing up. So the toilet, the back of the toilet, the floor, and the wall is covered in my shat. And this poor, cute little professor is going to go and help me clean it up. You can imagine I was dying in that moment. So she goes right to that bathroom, swings the door open, and <gasps> froze. 
that poor woman said, oh, oh, honey, and shuts the door. She says, um, I'm going to put an out of order sign on the door and call the janitor. But you, I think you need to go home. I'm going to let you take the makeup final. And I said, ma'am, I thought the makeup final was only for sick people and you had to have a doctor's note. And she said, no, you are sick. You are ill. Something is going on with you and you need to go home. I did not argue. I quickly grabbed my stuff and I, I went home. Um, I lost 12 pounds and most of my dignity that day, but you know, pastel, crazy. My best friend of five years just stabbed me in the back and got with my ex. And she thought I wouldn't find out, but I did. So let's do a story time. Her and I have been best friends off and on. I say off and on because she's always done things that just don't add up. But for these past two years, we've been solid. Like I see her almost every single day and when we don't see each other, we're always FaceTiming. All this just happened, so I'm still freaking out. When I was with my ex, she would always insist on us three hanging out. Like me and her couldn't hang out alone anymore. She'd always want him to come. And her excuse was, oh, because I want to get to know him and I need to make sure I like who you're with. After the first day that she actually met him, I forgot about this, she went and followed his Instagram and she didn't even tell me that she was gonna follow my boyfriend at the time, like she just went ahead and followed him. But why did she only like one picture? A picture of him from two years ago, just of him. So I screenshotted it and sent it to her and just asked her, hey, like, why? Her excuse was, oh my gosh, you know, I was stalking his page late last night to make sure like there was no girls, I was just trying to be a good friend to you and I must have accidentally liked his selfie. I'm little delusional over here and I believed her because she was my best friend. I didn't, oh, trust me, it's about to get way worse. I would always go to my job at a certain time. Like my schedule has always been the same since I started there. And my boyfriend at the time would always bring me lunch. He told me he was craving Chipotle and he was gonna bring me Chipotle. He would always show up at the exact time I clock out for my lunch. But for some reason that day, he was running a little late. And this is where I put pieces together. Him and I would share locations with each other, so I was easily just able to see where he was, but I also shared my locations with my best friend. It was at the same Chipotle that he was going to. So instead of watching his location, I just started watching hers. I saw her location slowly start moving towards my job. So I thought, delusional again, that they're coming to surprise me, like he came with her to surprise me, until I saw her location stop down the street from my job. When my boyfriend showed up without her, I asked him, what were you guys doing together? I know you guys were together. He told me he had no idea what I was talking about and he had not seen her. So he denied it, so I went and asked her. And, and her story, same thing. I was not with him. I don't know what you're talking about. It's just a coincidence. She claimed that she didn't want to be in our drama and she's just going to turn her locations off permanently with me. I'm not even gonna talk about him and I, but just know that we split on bad terms. But of course, when we split up, my best friend was so there for me, so supportive, and was telling me how he was trash and I didn't deserve him and she knew all along. So how did I figure out that they've been secretly like with each other? Her and I had plans for that and she told me that she had to cancel because her family's beach house was going to be open and no one was airbnb in it. And she said that they were gonna go. Normally when she'd go to her beach house though, I'd always get invited. And this time she insisted that it's just strictly family. So I decided I'll just take myself to Target and have like a self care pampering night. And when I was at Target, I heard um, my name being called from somebody behind me. It was her mom and little brother. Then she asked me, wait, why aren't you at the beach house with my best friend? Then I flipped a Una reverse. Well, why aren't you at the beach house with my best friend? When I tell you guys how bad my stomach dropped, then her mom says, well, I know she's there because the ring doorbell keeps like sending me notifications. When you get a gut feeling, you just know. So I asked her, pull that up, pull that up right now. And sure enough, there they were. My heart is like, absolutely shattered by both of them but just mainly because my best friend could do something like that and i just feel like <laughs> so i met this guy at the gym i know it's been a while since i've said those sentences but we're back this is a story about a girl named lucky this is a story about how fortune favors the bold the other day i was at the gym i just finished my workout and i was gonna go take a quick shower 
So I finished showering, I'm walking back to my locker. And as I'm walking back to my locker, I see there's a man in the corner of the locker right next to mine. And he's like, hey there, how are you? Super friendly, super nice. Let me just say, by the way, I'm not that kind of girl at the gym. I'm not the type of person that's like, hey buddy, how are you doing? How's your workout going? Not me, not me at all. I'm literally just a silent little church mouse. It did startle me. I'm not gonna lie, it did startle me, but I was just like, oh, hey there. And I really got a good look. And this man is 6'3" beard older gentleman fine as all hell this is a friendly reminder for the class i'm just in a towel right i just showered i have no shirt on i'm in a towel and i'm walking to my locker and he strikes up conversation with me he's like oh it's my first day here like what do you think of the gym do you like it here and i'm like yeah dude it's great like you're really gonna like it everyone's really chill it's everyone like kind of keeps to themselves it's a great gym i was looking at him like this because you know he's 36 3 this muscular daddy literally a, a daddy and I was like, I like your beard, by the way. How do you get it to look so full? And I was, I was being flirtatious. I was, I was. He was like, oh, you know, genetics. <laughs> well, fuck my drag. Fuck my drag. <laughs> so as I'm standing there chatting with him, you know, in my little towel, I decide, you know what, Manny? You guys are chopping it up. He's flirting with you. You can tell. He's looking. There's things he's looking. I decide to just drop my towel. I was grabbing my underwear and shorts I was going to put on, so I just dropped my towel. Wasn't facing him, I was like to the side, so it's not like I was like, hey buddy, full, you know, full ween. He saw more than most, I will admit, he saw more than most. <laughs> he goes, you know what, you don't even got to worry about that beard, because you have so many other assets. And he goes like this, and he ups and downs me. Let me tell you something. So now that my oven is turned on, you know, to a full 350 degrees Fahrenheit, I am fully activated. Am I nice to meet you? Have a good one. He's like, you too. I will start walking away. I turn back around and I go, can I get your number? Me, me. He smiled and he said, yes, here's my number. So we've been chatting a little bit and I just found out that he owns a house in Malibu. In Malibu. Yo, listen, let me tell you something real quick. If I disappear, <laughs> I've eloped. I've eloped. You know, I'm making this story time to just let you guys know that fortune does favor the bold. You know, drop that towel in front of an older man. He might be rich. So I'll let you know how it goes, but um, I thought I had to inform you. I used to use this trick as a kid to fall asleep, and I think I just made it up in my head, but it worked every single time. I feel like in order to explain this at the best that I can, you have to close your eyes, and I'm gonna tell you what to picture in your head. Okay, so close your eyes and picture a white cube blank room, okay? And on the ground, on the floor, there is a ginormous clock, round circle clock. It's about 30 feet wide and it ha it's black and it has one hand, a, a white hand that spins around on the clock. You are picturing this from a bird's eye perspective. So you're on the ceiling looking down and you are trying to clear up this image in your head. What is the clock made of? How solid is it? And most importantly, you're going to try and speed up the hand of the clock and it's going to go faster and faster and faster, okay? Once you start to develop more control over the speed of the hand, you're going to go into the second step, which is going down and closer to the clock so then you can see it better um, so it's gonna look bigger in your mind it's going to be bigger and once you get closer you're gonna picture the white hand of the clock is going to look more and more like a bed and eventually it is this white comfy narrow bed you are going to go into the third step which is shifting your perspective from looking down into looking up because now you are in the bed, okay? You are snuggled up in the bed. Use your bed to be like, oh my gosh, this is a bed, like I am in a bed. And then the hand on the clock is, is in stationary right now, but you're going to try and move it from 12 to one, slowly. Um, now this ta might take like some time and a lot of control because you have to focus on this. You have to start to feel it in your stomach. You know when you go down a roller coaster and your stomach kind of flips? Even if your eyes were closed, your stomach kind of still flips and does that thing. Make sure you're feeling that rotation in your stomach, okay? 
and once you really start feeling it, then you can start going faster from 12 to 1 to 12 to 5 to 12 until you get a full rotation one time around. Once you get your full rotation, try and do it again and speed it up. And speed it up. And you can do this at your own pace. Just speed it up. Once you get this figured out, then you're going to jump scare yourself and try and go the other direction. And it might take that step again of going from 12 to 11. 12 to 11. And slowly going there. But, um... This is just so then you have control of your motion and awareness in your soul and in your mind and in your stomach. In order to know that this is truly working, you're going to picture in your mind, where on earth is my door in my real room? Where in my real room is my door? Um, if I'm to take myself out of the scenario, and if you can't take yourself out of the scenario, you're doing a good job. Continue going. Once you start to have control of the speed, the direction, and, um, you know, overall surroundings um, in your gut, you could add some other steps like levitating the clock, turning the clock sideways, and going in a circle again. Um, and real, kind of like going really fast in one direction and seeing how fast you can stop and then switch the other direction in your stomach. Once you start developing that control more and more, you're in dreamland, and you can get up and walk away, create a door, and just walk into whatever reality you want to go into. It's so much fun. It really is. I don't know how seven-year-old, eight-year-old, nine-year-old me came up with this. I must have had a crazy imagination. But like, yo, it was fun. It really was, and it worked every single time, so there you go. Get ready with me to break up with my Baca for good. Pull Baca to meet me at the dog park because I want to break up with him in a safe location. Because when he finds out that I'm breaking up with him, oh, it's not going to be pretty. I'm ready to move on to bigger and better things. He just really hasn't been satisfying my brain lately. It's been a full three days since the last time he took me squishmallow hunting, and that's too long. My Baca knows the consequences, so he's gonna have to pay. Hopefully he will reflect on this treatment that he has given me. I'm a kitten! I need top tier treatment! I have some other cute Bacas on Craigslist, so I have a good lineup coming up. I just hope they spoil me like my current Baca does, but it's gonna be hard because he does spoil me good, but as of lately, he hasn't. Look at this beauty blender, it's so big! Hopefully it's not my Baca's off day, because he is going to be super angry with the fact that I'm breaking up with them. But it is what it is! There's so many Baca's in the sea, how do I know that they don't want me too? And my Baca can be super mean, and I'm just hoping that he doesn't bring the electrical shock collar and put it on me. The shock collar was fun at some point, but it reminded me of too much of my past life when I got burnt to a crisp on the electrical chair. I want to live in the moment, not the past anymore! I'm ready for new energy and new fur. I was thinking about actually dating a furry. I wonder how that would be. I think Mother Kitten would be quite concerned with me if I was dating somebody in a fursuit. But it is what it is. They're so cute. Not good with breakups and I'm so scared to tell Baca that I'm done with him. But it is what it is. People have to learn the consequences of their actions. That's why I don't feel bad about breaking up with my Baca. Because you did it to yourself, honey. After I break up with them, I really want to go to Claire's and look at all the cute things. I already know the tactics my Baca is going to use to try to stay with me. He's probably going to offer up his credit card. No! Besides, his credit card's only a silver American Express. I want somebody with a black card. Like I said, on to bigger and better things. Yeah, you guys, wish me luck on this breakup. I'm not nervous at all, but I would like you guys' support because I don't want to get electrocuted.